Hi everyone, welcome back to Personal Branding for Job Seekers, the mini workshop part two, how to identify your personal and professional brand. If you missed uh, part one, make sure you go back and watch that. This whole thing makes a lot more sense in chronological order. Um, I want to talk a little bit about why I'm using the language personal and professional brand, and that is because you are probably a person and a professional. And the tool that I'm going to show you about .me sort of allows for a mix of both the personal and professional. And uh, I often find when I'm going through this process with clients that there's actually really strong connections between who we are as people and who we are as professionals. Um, but I don't like to just think of my clients as professionals. They're people first and then professionals. So I want to start just fundamentally as we approach, you know, how to sort of dig up what makes you a unique professional um, by pointing out that you absolutely do have a unique mix of skills, experiences, talents, and goals. Um, often when I work with folks, it's really a crisis of confidence. So if you're in a job that's not a great fit, you're not going to be super aware of sort of what your strengths are because you may not be using them every day. Often when you're in a job that doesn't feel right, it's because there's a mismatch between your talents and the job, um, which doesn't mean anything um, about your ability to do great work, but it can often feel like you're not great at work. So I want you to know I've never worked with anyone who didn't have a really interesting and compelling mix of skills, experiences, talents, and goals that um, that they could you know form into a, a really compelling career narrative um, and, and market themselves as a, in a very compelling way to employers. So please know that you do have a unique mix of skills, experiences, and goals. The other piece, I'm going to about to walk you through some questions that you can ask yourself um, as you go through this process to try and identify what your unique mix is. Um, I want you to know what this process looks like um, when I work do it with clients because it's actually in depth and takes quite a bit of time. So you shouldn't um, you shouldn't think that this is something you can do in 30 minutes and never think about again. It's certainly something you can start in 30 minutes, and that's what this uh, workshop series is about. Um, but definitely, uh, it's a really an ongoing process that requires a lot of reflection and writing and thinking about what you've done and what you'd like to do. So, so to give you a sense, um, I when someone books a career audit and strategy session with me, before we even meet, they submit um, a rather lengthy questionnaire. It includes a resume and cover letter review, as well as a review of uh, any professional online presence. So right there, before we even meet, there's, um, you know, almost an hour and a half of, of work on my end, plus whatever um, you know the client does in terms of completing the questionnaire and, and, and reviewing their resume and updating LinkedIn and that sort of thing. And then we meet for 75 minutes. So we spend over an hour um, with me asking questions and the client telling me stories and we sort of just basically are collecting data and reviewing data. And then I create a report. So this whole process um, it really takes probably four to five hours and uh, you know it's it can be a starting point it can it can be something that the client can use to move forward with absolutely but it's really designed to like get people thinking about conveying themselves in a strategic way uh, rather than just sort of chasing every job that comes along so here are some key questions to ask as you get started I've created a worksheet um, that you can actually download for free so you can uh, enter your email address below and we'll send you a copy um, and this worksheet and these questions are designed just to get you thinking a little bit outside the box. Like right now, if you're a job seeker, you're probably looking for jobs. You're looking sort of to shape, you know, who you are based on what you see around you um, in the job postings. But I actually kind of want to suggest that you should take the opposite approach, which is to get really clear on who you are as a professional and then sort of look for opportunities that are a good match. So you'll see that there are, are some questions here. Um, what are your favorite and least favorite pieces of your current position? What are some examples of how you work with colleagues? What do you want to do more of? What do you want to do less of? Um, and again, this is not just about what you want more of and less of at work, but sort of lifestyle-wise too. Like perhaps you want a shorter commute. Uh, perhaps you want to work, you know, part time. Perhaps you know you've got all kinds of different things. You want to live in a different city. So it's not just about work, but it's also about your life and lifestyle goals as well. What are some of your unique educational experiences and how have they shaped you? What kind of skills do you have? Do you have skills around a particular kind of software or technology? Do you have really strong communication skills? What are you most proud of? This is a question I always, always, always ask. 
and I suggest you spend some time really thinking about um, what you're most proud of in the scope of your educational career, your work career, your volunteer um, you know, life, whatever kind of work that you've done, and I, I think it's totally fine to take a very liberal approach to what work means, uh, what are you most proud of? And see if there's any patterns there around uh, things that make you feel really good about the work that you've done. What's missing for you in your current work? And this could be um, actual tasks around the work itself, or it could be around sort of the culture of the work, uh, of where you're working now, or the people that you're working with. And again, the worksheet um, that walks you through these questions, uh, you can download below. So it's really important that you set aside the time to think about the past, present, and future. Um, and in addition to that, I think a really great strategy that I have clients do is to ask for feedback from others. And when I say others and feedback, I'm not looking, I'm not asking you to sort of like do some like ego work and find people who will tell you how great you are, but for others who can help bring your awareness to areas of your work that you might not be paying attention to. So take people that you trust, and I don't necessarily even mean, you know, work, co-workers. It could be friends, it could be a loved one, it could be a family member, it could be colleagues. Um, ask for feedback, like really specific feedback. What's it like to work with me? Um, I'm, you know, just let them know you're doing some thinking about your career and you'd love some feedback on what they think your strengths are. And again, this isn't so that we feel great about ourselves, but it's just to make sure that our awareness is brought to areas where it might not be um, right now. An approach is to stay open and curious um, and, you know, to be uh, playful, really, with your experience. Really, we're going to be um, taking your list of questions and looking at the answers and looking for patterns. So what kind of things um, are you really proud of? There might be something um, around, um, you know, the kind of culture that you want that's really important to you or the kind of people um, that bring out the best in you or vice versa. So we're going to be looking for patterns in your answers. And the only way we can really find those patterns is to think about, is for you to do the work around um, your past work um, and answer some questions like this. So I want you to go ahead, download the worksheet, and take some time to answer those questions and look for patterns. And I will be back uh, in video three uh, with a little tutorial on how to use about.me.